Tis the season, let's get creative. Look at these acrylic paint pouring cutouts. You can do a direct pour using traditional colors. Look at that marbleization. Here, this is a flippy cup where it creates more of abstract look. And you can really make it any fun color you like. I love this one. All right, so how to start. First, you're going to fill just regular acrylic paint up to that lower mark. And this is the hardest part, is picking your colors, choosing what palette you wanna work with, and it's all about the prep. So it's not so much painting it. When you actually go to pour the paint, it goes fairly fast. It's the prep work that takes time. So what I'm doing is I'm picking my colors. I'm gonna have five cups and come up with a theme of color that you find enjoyable. Then there's the second line on top of the cup and you're gonna be filling that up with a medium called Floetrol. And that is in the white containers behind. And I'm shaking it really, really, really good and it says Flow on it. Once you have it, you're going to pour that on top of the color and you're gonna go up to that second line. We can mark them for you if you're worried about finding the measuring. And you're going to make sure you have an apron on, make sure you have gloves on if you're worried about bidding messy. I do not have gloves on, but I will put gloves on when it comes time to actually pouring. Like I said, this is where your arms get tired. You're gonna just stir, 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 stir using the popsicle sticks. You wanna make sure that it's thin enough that it just drips off of the popsicle stick after you're stirred them up. All right, so here you can see I'm testing and I'm looking. Yes, they're all dripping perfectly. So wear your apron so you don't get messy and just let that be able to drip off. All right, let's get this going. So you have your cut out your wood and you have your colors lined up in the pattern that you want them to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly pour in a little bit of each color and I'm gonna layer it. Did you notice how I use the popsicle stick to wipe the paint when I pour the little bit in? Keep that in mind. So you're just gonna keep going that layer, you're gonna build that layer up and it's going to look awesome. So once my big cup is ready and you can see the layers, I'm going to basically put some gloves on because this is where your hands are gonna get super messy. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're covered. So as simple as that, I put a tray down to catch any excess paint that rolls off. I am going to either pour it on or let gravity kind of move it around. So you're gonna see how I put the cup and then I flip it so it's already touching it and it's trapped in there. And then I'm gonna lift it up and it's gonna just start flowing. Look how awesome that is. Okay, so then I'm gonna now use gravity to kind of go there. Try not to let it fall off the edges in the beginning until it gets simpler and then you have room for it to come off. But you wanna make sure you get it spread across the shape as much as possible first. Then you'll notice some edges, it doesn't wanna flow exactly real quick. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hand and just pull up some extra paint. And it doesn't matter if you're smearing it there because you're just allowing it to grab onto it and then the other paint is gonna flow on top of it. And you really wanna check your edges, so the sides. You want it to make sure it looks like it flows over and shows the paint really kind of flowing in every direction. You don't wanna leave any unfinished areas. Now I'm ready for the next step. I'm going to take my gloves off. Look how carefully I ball that up so I don't touch it. Hold it with the other glove hand, turn it inside out so that the paint is not getting all over everything. That's WD-40. I am going to very gently just do one quick fast spray. That's it, don't do any more. And what it does is oil and water doesn't mix. So you're gonna see all of these cells and these chrysolites that are popping up there and it just looks so cool. I think it looks like snowflakes when we do these Christmas cutouts. All right, now let's talk about how to do a direct pour. Notice the piece of tape that I put on this stocking. I wanna have like two different color themes going on. Um, so I put a little piece of tape there. I have my area down there. Now this time I'm not going to layer it into another cup. I am going to legitly just pour it directly onto the wood. So 
when you're doing this, you need to still think about your color choices and what patterns you want. I'm going with traditional. I'm going straight up green, and then I'm gonna go straight up red. And I'm just kind of pouring it right on top of it. And you kind of can be a little worried because as you know, red and green mixes and makes brown. However, with that Floetrol in there, the medium does not mix it more or less just kind of pushes it side to side with it. And then of course I put in the white so that it could come in there and create those standard colors. And I'm just kind of letting it go all over. And once again, you want to tap your edges if it's not flowing right there um, in those areas. I don't have gloves on right now. Obviously, you can always wash the paint off, but I would suggest during the pouring area to wear some gloves. Um, when you do direct pour, I like my dexterity a little bit more. That's why I don't wear the gloves. So here we go. I'm going to now kind of just let it, and that's the beauty of it. You just kind of let it create the way it wants to go and you guide it by how you tilt it, how you put it around and so forth. And you can see in some areas I added a little bit more and then I move it around and I look at it and kind of let it shape itself. Then I'm gonna start on the top here in just a little bit. Um, now, I'm going to kind of go with more of the traditional colors here too. I'm just gonna do black, white, and gray. Kind of like the stop area. And you'll notice here I am, I'm just touching a little bit on those edges to make sure that it flows naturally off of all sides. You don't wanna end it and then find out that you left a piece of wood showing. All right, so the next spot, let's see here. I know, I can't stop, it just keeps going. <laughs> Uh, and you can use the WD-40 on this as well, but you don't have to. So I'm trying to show you all different kinds of techniques and choices that you can come up with. So here I'm doing the direct pour of the white, then the direct pour of the black, and um, a little direct pour going sideways, different way, how you, if you do it in a circle pattern, if you do it in a zigzag pattern, think about those kinds of things. And here I'm kind of just letting it randomly kind of absorb over there and I'm it's okay if your two different colors meet you, you can do it all one color you can do it separate but you can see here I'm going to be um, taking that tape off shortly and seeing the difference still tap those edges all right so now I'm going to take the tape off and you see the little wood right there all right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda create a blend in there and I'm just legit gonna pour black. And all that's gonna do is fill in that. It kinda gives it a, a shadowed effect between the, the top of the sock and the bottom of the sock of where it might have folded over in its style or design. So once again, this is the direct pour technique and it turns out fabulous. I can't wait to see yours.